recorded live in Jacksonville, Florida. This is Trivial Warfare. More than just a pub quiz, Trivial Warfare is your gateway to a worldwide trivia community. Join your hosts, Jonathan. We just described Ric Flair as the Anatol <laughs> Man and Planet of the Apes. <laughs> Chris. Yo, we going down to Sesame Street. <laughs> that's, that's, that's your impression of hardcore rap? No. <laughs> Carmella. That would irritate the hell out of me. I'm like, I just want my groceries. <laughs> <laughs> my ice cream is melting. <laughs> ben. ben. Four halogens in that list. It was, oh, oh, my God. You were like, it's not the halogens. I'm like, no, Ben, no. Those damn halogens got me again. <laughs> and the rest of the Trivial Warfare Army for another week of fun and games. Now here's your host, Jonathan Oaks. Hello and welcome back to Trivial Warfare. We are the podcast that takes the pub quiz out of the pub and brings it home to you. My name is Jonathan and I am here today with the full crew. To my right, we have Miss Carmela Smith. Hello, Carmela. Hello, Jonathan. You have a beautiful, sparkly highlight on your cheek today. I enjoy my glitter. <laughs> I mean, if you can't wear glitter in the morning, when can you wear it? That's true. I'm, I'm with you. I appreciate it. Uh, to my left, the one and only Mr. Ben Young. Hello, Ben. How come I didn't get any glitter? What happened? Um, you were playing the other game. Ah, I was. Until I wasn't. That's true. <laughs> until, you, yeah, until you basically dissed us. Yeah. Yep. Well, it wasn't personal. You weren't. Oh, it completely of, was personal. You weren't at the party table. <laughs> you weren't. You weren't one of the twenty deep I was rolling with in the <laughs> That's club. True. That's true. That's true. I did have in my knife though. <laughs> and I am here to my very far left with Mister Chris Hollister. Hello, Chris. So the exaggerations of my death. Uh, well, my death has been very exaggerated <laughs> because Jonathan, for the longest time, kept talking to me, going. Chris, you're never on the show anymore. Chris, you're never on the show anymore. Just FYI, this is three in a row now, mister. So you can stop saying that now. And I'm telling you right now, the you're audience. You're telling me? <laughs> no, if I was telling you, that would be completely yeah, no, different. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There'll be more glitter involved. Um, <laughs> and I'm telling you, the audience appreciates it. Everybody misses you. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's going to be on. Fantastic. Now, we have a guest today. We do. We have a guest. I'm very excited about it, too, because he's wearing an awesome shirt. He gave us a nice background. He's a very nice man. I appreciate him. So. Live from New Jersey, we have Mr. Tim Beggs. Hello, Woo! Tim. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the show, Tim. Thank uh, you. Uh, remind everybody, I said New Jersey, but remind everybody where you're from, what you do, and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. So I'm still new to New Jersey, so I'm really from California, but uh, uh, I live in uh, Chesterfield, New Jersey, which is near uh, Trenton, Princeton, kind of central state. So, And uh, I uh, actually work for a food bank and do human resources for them. So support your local food bank. Put That's my awesome. plug in there. So, yeah. Fantastic. Awesome. Love that. Now, uh, something fun about yourself. Something fun. Uh I'm a trivia nerd, like one would expect, but also big into history, so that was a great reason to move to New Jersey. Tons of history around here. Um, live in an old historic town in an old historic house, um, having moved from a little square box condo in San Jose, California, <laughs> so to be in the midst of history is pretty cool for me. So That is pretty cool. By the way, did they name the couch after your town? I don't think so. Oh. I don't think that's right. I think... <laughs> but... Chesterfield, yeah. I mean, come on. Right. It's better than Sofa, All right. New Jersey. Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, but Love right. Seat, New Jersey is fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. That's right. And very comfortable to live in. Mm, that's what I hear. Uh, so uh, I think it's time to bust her on for warming up Chris. All right. It's time to warm it up A trivial warfare today. And there's only one person who can warm it up for the TWA. And that's Chris. And sometimes Jonathan. Actually hosted by a Chris. And fantastic. actually, yeah, right. and actually now we couldn't get Chris Pratt today. That's true. Chris oh. Evans wasn't available. What about Chris Hemsworth? <laughs> uh, no, he, he was a hard no. And Chris mm. Pine will not return my calls. What the heck, Chris Pine? So we do have a Chris. It is Mr. Chris Hollister. What about Christine Lotte? Who's that? No? Oh, she's an actress. No, nothing. I don't know, I don't know that right. person. Uh, oh. Christina Applegate. I do like Christina Applegate, but she's not a Chris. Well, 
Chris in the first part of her name. It's just like, we, I'm not a John. No, you're not. Well, we don't know what you do when you're off hours. I give her the respect <laughs> of her name. Now, Chris Jenner said no as well. Oh, that's disappointing. Yes. No, 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 it's not. Never mind. Anyway. Actually, yeah, I was right. going to say not that disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So your warming up Chris question today is restaurant founders. And so everybody, I'm going to go ahead and give you the name and I want you to tell me the restaurant um, that they founded. Okay. okay? And if there's right. multiples, there'll be multiple names. on. All right. I should be good at this, right? I mean, I've eaten at a lot of restaurants. <laughs> That's true. Tim, <laughs> you get Paul Fleming and Philip Chang. Paul oh, P.F. Chang. P.F. Chang is correct. Yeah, that's good. Ben. Yep. You get Ray Kroc. Oh. Well, he technically didn't found he it, didn't but found McDonald's. it. McDonald's. 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 <laughs> well, he created the restaurant chain of McDonald's, but that is correct. All right. All and right. a great movie called The Founder. Yes. About that. With yeah. the, uh, with the amazing Michael Keaton. Yep. All right, Jonathan. You get George W. Church. Church's chicken. Church's fried chicken is correct. Ooh. All right. Carmela. That's that good stuff. Yes. Dave Thomas. <laughs> you got to go to the hood to get churches. Mm-hmm. You said Dave Thomas? Yes, that's, ma'am. That's Wendy's. Wendy's is correct. All right, Tim. You get Glenn Bell. Taco Bell. Taco Bell is really? correct. Yes. His name is Bell. It yes. Is. All right. Taco <laughs> Glenn. Spin off. <laughs> All right. Ben. Yep. You get Carl Karcher, K A R C H E R. Carl Karcher. Carl Karcher. Uh, crystals? That is incorrect. Anybody want to help him out? Carl Jr. Carl Jr. Jr. is correct. Oh, going West Coast. All right. Uh, also jo- known as a Hardee's over on mm-hmm. this side. Yeah. Jonathan. Yo. You get Irv Robbins and Burton Baskins. I don't, I mean, Pizza Hut? <laughs> oh, come no. on dude baskin robbins correct all right carmella yes you get nathan and murray handworker and i'm not joking about his la- their last name <laughs> by the way h-a-n-d-w-e-r-k-e-r hey it's a good job if you can get it you said nathan and murray handworker yes <laughs> <laughs> i like to think it's like nathan's hot dogs but nathan's hot dogs is correct oh, okay I didn't know that was a restaurant. I just see the little packages in the grocery store. It is. In New York City, It's uh, yeah. they're all, like all over the oh, place. Okay. Not only hand workers, also ham workers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Very much so. They host the uh, hot dog eating contest on Ooh. 4th of July. Yep. There you go. At all right. Coney Island. Yes. Tim, you get, uh, you get Harlan Sanders. Kentucky Fried Chicken. Kentucky Fried Chicken is correct. Ben. Yep. S. Truett Kathy. That's Chick-fil-A. That is Chick-fil-A. Well done. All right, Jonathan with the soft J. Hard J, bro. Always hard. <laughs> Fred DeLuca. <laughs> Fred DeLuca. Fred DeLuca. Fred's DeLuca's FD Deli. Oh, man. I'm not familiar with this one. Luca's. Uh, what if, what restaurants? Burger King. He has the uh, is the largest chain in the uh, in the entire world as a uh, as number of franchises out there. It is Subway sandwiches. Subway. Subway. Actually, that stat might not be correct anymore. Oh, you don't think so? It closed a I lot of stores. It, oh, okay. All right. Anyway, uh, Carmela. Okay. Andrew and Peggy Churng, and it's C H E R N J or N G. Excuse me. They got Churn. Andrew and Peggy Churng. I have no idea. The restaurant that comes on uh, Florida Blues. Uh, oh, Panda Express. Panda Express is correct. <laughs> All right. Okay, I just have a side note. I used to work for a politician of Chinese uh, heritage, and we used to refer to him as the Panda Express. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> I love it. All right. He was a Panda Bear. Uh, yeah. <laughs> these last couple are the hard ones. So this last round, oh, these, these are the hard are, these ones. These are the hard ones now. Yes. All right. Those I have not. <laughs> they have not been hard. You, I think you guys well, have missed a grand total of like well. two. <laughs> I missed one. All right, Tim, Thomas Fortner, F O R K N E R. Ah, chilies. The government actually has a chart using this restaurant, depending on how um, they know that an area. Uh, is oh, okay. Uh, waffle, waffle House. Waffle House is correct. 
There is a Waffle House index out there yeah. that the government uses. If the Waffle House is open, they know that the area is okay uh, is okay um, after uh, severe storms. Wow. I know, right? Ben, you get Al Copeland. Would that be Copeland's? It is not Copeland's, no. Al Copeland. That's a good guess. Yeah, Copeland's Burger. is delicious. Yeah, it is. <laughs> they do, oddly enough, this restaurant does not serve spinach. Oh. Popeye's chicken? Popeye's oh, chicken. Popeye's chicken and Popeye's. Mm-hmm. The taste of New Orleans. All right, Jonathan. <laughs> yeah. Jonathan, you get Vernon and Lewis Rudolph. You will want to remember their name because they're hot and delicious. Nothing? Firehouse. <laughs> Krispy Kreme donuts. Mm. All right. They are hot and delicious. All right. So, Carmela, you get David Edgerton. E D G E R T O N. You got anything else for me? Uh, yeah. Uh, I can give you Esther and Harry Snyder. No, I mean. Oh. The. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, like clues. More clues. I got you. Okay. Yes. This is the second largest burger joint franchise wise in the United States. Burger King. Burger King is correct. Anyway, that is your public service announcement. Warm it up. Chris, question. We have some announcements. Oh, I actually we, had we to write them down. There's so many oh, freaking wow. announcements. We have announcements? We have announcements. First off, I don't okay. know which is more shocking announcements or the fact that you wrote something down. <laughs> My memory, dude. I have to write things down. So Fair I'm going to try not to take too long with these, but these are important. First up, the podcast award nominations are open and they will be closed on July 31st. So this is almost your last chance to go nominate Trivial Warfare for a 2019 podcast award. We are eligible in the People's Choice and the Games and Hobbies categories. Please take a minute, go to podcastawards.com and nominate Trivial Warfare. All you have to do is sign up. You do give them your email address and then you get to pick from their categories and we'll be in the drop down for those categories. So we've won two years in a row. We actually really enjoy winning and gives us some level of validation and joy. And so if you want us to be nominated so that we have a chance at winning again, make sure that you go to podcastawards.com. Uh, next up, we're going to be in Vegas in like a week or two. And the podcast, or not the podcast, the Trivia Hall of Fame announcements will be done while we're there. You still have a chance to vote. If you haven't voted yet, go to TriviaHallOfFame.com and go to the vote section to vote for Chris and Carmela and Ben and myself to be inducted into the Trivia Hall of Fame. Last up, I uh, just want to remind you guys, we have new shows coming out all the time. First up, we have Trivial Warfare Blitz. These are 10-minute shows that are lightning round style trivia games they come out on thursdays we have a new show called foreplay that is a game of connections where people are finding the connections between words to make larger connections we're having a lot of fun with these that show comes out on fridays so remember thursday blitz foreplay fridays Friday's. Jenna <laughs> right. comes on Friday. Ice cream. All right. All right. That's enough of the announcements. Today's game is going to be Chris and Tim versus Jonathan and Ben. Carmela is hosting, and it is time to play the game. Play us. Oh, yeah. Y'all know what time it is. This is Mr. Literature himself cordially inviting you to the game. This is six rounds of trivia goodness. Three questions per round. Every right answer gets you 10 points. In the middle, we'll take a pause for the cause and ask a midpoint question worth up to 20 juicy points. After round six, you can wager any or all those points you've been building up and take a shot at the final round. It's a series of theme-based questions we call the gauntlet. It's just that easy, baby. But this game ain't gonna play itself, players. Let's get it on. Hey, folks, this is Jonathan. I am breaking in. This is not an advertisement, uh, but I am breaking in because there is something that I want to make sure you're aware of. If you are a patron of the show, meaning you've signed up on Patreon, I want to make sure that you're getting any messages that I'm sending. I use Patreon's messaging in order to reach out to people when I'm inviting them on the show. Um, 
anytime I'm trying to communicate with you, if we're not like personal friends on Facebook at this point, then I'm probably using Patreon and I notice that I don't get a ton of responses. So I think that perhaps some of you may have your, you may not have notifications set up or you may have your messages going into a spam filter or something like that. So I want to ask everybody who's a patron to go out and double check your email address. You should have gotten at least one email from me where I asked you to validate your your name as it's listed on the website right now. So that's one message that if you didn't get, then there's something wrong. So I want to make sure your email address is updated on the Patreon website. And I need to make sure that you're able to get my messages. Okay. Uh, it's very important. That is the way that I'm going to be contacting you. Thanks for taking the time to do that. I know it's a little bit of a pain, but uh, it will be well worth it in the end. And uh, now we can get on with today's game. All right. So your first category in round one is and they're off. (laughs) Produced from 1970 to 2006, with some versions popular with street racers, what company made the Celica? I can lock that in 100%. I can too. Do you agree with that? I do. Locked in. We're locked in. All right, Tim, what you thinking? My dad owned one. It's a Celica. Right. Well, a Toyota. <laughs> okay, <that's, yeah. laughs> yes, it is a Celica. It's a Celica. That was part yeah. of the question. Literally. Right. Yep, I completely agree. It is the Toyota Celica. We also said Toyota. Uh, the Supra is a version of the Celica, and it was made by Toyota. Ooh. That used to be a cool car, man. They had some classy kind they of did. curved but sharp mm-hmm. designs. Mm-hmm. I like them. Your next category is part of your world. Disney is continuing with their direction of making live-action versions of their animated films. The Little Mermaid seems to be the next on the list. Recently, the role of Ariel was cast to the quote-unquote disgruntlement of certain people. Currently on the TV show Grownish, who was cast as Ariel? I hope you know her name. I do. Yay, let me see. Cool. We're locked in. Sweet. All right, Tim. Uh, it's been in the news a lot. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this. I could see her face. I am having a hard time remembering her name. I uh, the o- the only person who I know who's been cast in that is Halle Berry. But well, uh, no, actually, it's it's Halle is her first name, but it's not. Is it Barry? Oh. Is Barry her last name? It's not Halle Berry, but it's uh, but this that's the actual actress. That's the name. I don't uh Have you looked under the sea? I didn't realize the current, <laughs> current events questions. Jeez. Everything's better when it is wetter, Chris. Thank you. Thank you, Take Sebastian. It from me. It's true though. It's so true. I'm, I'm with you. Thank you, Sebastian. Virtual fist bump. I say let's go with Barry. Because I think it's right, ha- I think it's like Haley Barry, actually. It's not Hallie, it's Haley. But I don't want to okay. go f- I don't want to do a first name. Perfect. I'm I'm with you. All right, we're locking with Barry. All right, so yeah, I made this similar mistake because I saw it as a blip on the TV. I was like, they're casting old ass Halle Berry as a little girl, <laughs> <Aww. Bernie>? dude. <laughs> Seriously, Halle Berry is beautiful. She can pull she it off. Old. She looks oh, she amazing. If she should old. be, she, no, she should she be can't. the mom. She can. No. So he, there was. He, he's the, defending no. Halle Berry so much. Chris actually said the word. He did. I did not. You did. You absolutely 100% you did. did. You absolutely 100% did, Chris. I didn't hear it. I know. Okay, rewind it back. A little, but I'm no, not, we're recording. I'm not rewinding. No, I'm not talking about rewinding and podcasting. Don't act like you've never said f- <laughs> Anyway, and then I was corrected by my wife who said that her name is actually Halle Bailey. And then it got reinforced in my mind when people got all up in the uproar because the girl is black being cast as a character that was white with red hair, so... Bailey. So it's it's funny because you guys Bailey. you were there you said yeah. Haley Berry yeah instead Bailey. of Halle Bailey, Bailey. Yeah. you yeah. had it yeah I knew there was the mix up on that I just didn't know I couldn't remember which side it was she is part of a duo she and her sister have a uh, a music duo called Chloe and Halle and her name is Halle Bailey oh man ah, Ben sorry about that Tim nice job ah, so hey so close yeah but Tim I mean but Ben only got his he got one out of his three so we're in good shape. Ben's better than that, Chris. Mm. And your Prove last, ca- <laughs> your last category in the round is obligatory sports question. Right. Sport ball. 
in tennis, if they announce a score of love, how much is that? I can lock in. No, I can too. We agree on that? Yep. We're going to write down our 10 points. All right, Tim, they're locked in. I know the answer. Is, Do you? Is it, is it zero? It is zero. It's nil. Nil. Yeah. Uh, to talk in, uh, in uh, Carmela's soccer terms, it's nil. <laughs> it's zero. I love you. Wow. Thank, thank you for that. <laughs> wow. We also said zero. So you zero him? <laughs> <laughs> every chance i get so uh yes love uh is another word for zero yay and, did, all right. you, did you research the origin of that because I, I know it's related to something but I no i just remembered it from when i played tennis i think it's kind of like bless your heart <laughs> it's, like, it's like oh love it's okay i can uh, ask david levacy he would be probably be able yeah, to he, tell he, me he would yeah. definitely, be able to yeah. definitely. Uh, at the end of the first round, score is 30 to 30. Nope, 30 to 20. Uh, ben and Jonathan are in the lead. All right. Your first category in round two is science. Science! In what part of the body will you find the patellar tendon? We're locked in. All right. Chris, what what you thinking? <sighs> I've had friends of mine that pulled it, and I'm trying to remember. Patella. Patella. I think it's the knee. Does that sound right? That's. I was thinking leg, knee, uh, myself, because it's just. I th- yeah, I think it sounds like it's almost like a running. Yeah, I, you mm. know that old song, heads, shoulders, knees, and toes. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think it's cranium clavicles patellus phalanges. Oh. So I think patellus is knee. Okay, I'm good with that. I I like his thunder. What school did you go to? <laughs> One in San Jose. (laughs) Is that the kind of stuff they teach kids out there? How did you get that? Uh, Anatomy. I I took anatomy at one point, but yeah. I've never heard anybody do that before. All right, so we're locked in with knee. Uh, We also said knee. Patella is the kneecap, so there's going to be one of the tendons that holds it in place. Yep. So the patellar tendon connects your knee to your shin. It's part of your knee. (laughs) Good job, Tim. Yeah. Some of that schooling paid off. Your next category is brought to us by Rob Warman. Thank you, hey, Rob. Prolific trivia writer Rob Warman. Thanks, Rob. <laughs> category is grand scale. By the way, sorry to interrupt, but congratulations to Rob Warman who made the tournament, tournament of champions, champions nice. for Jeopardy. Yes. Wow. Congratulations, Rob. Annika's awesome. on there too, isn't she? Annika is yeah. on there. So, oh, got two more heads in there. Fantastic. We're so proud of you guys, and we are rooting for you. We should send them a shirt and see if they can wear it on TV. That would be awesome. I think Josh Hill is a listener too. Uh, Tiger. Ah. Josh Tiger Hill. I think he is. I know that we've interacted on Twitter a number of times. Gotcha. Uh, but I'm not sure because he's not in the Facebook group. So, hey. Well, your category is grand scale. Sweet. (laughs) Known for his 40,000-pound Flor di Como installation in a Las Vegas hotel, Jeff Chihuly is an artist of what medium? 100%. Okay. We locked in. All right, Tim. I was actually, me, uh, my wife Angie and I were very fortunate enough to see a beautiful, uh, stunning display um, in Oklahoma City, when I saw my aunt, uh, they have actually one, the largest uh, the largest Chihuly um, e- um, exhibit in the um, in the world out well in the world outside of Seattle. I think they I said. Was about I was about to say. I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> no, but no, it's but no, it's it's true. Yeah, but I was he, about to bring up Seattle. Right. Well, that's where he was. That's where he was out of. And the interesting part is, is he's actually going. I mean, he's blind. And the only reason why there's more art out there now is because he has been teaching uh, his apprentices of it. And it's just, it's just, it's a really cool story of the work that he does, but it's glass blowing. Yeah, yeah, I 100% agree and definitely want to get out to Seattle and, and see that museum. Yeah, so, yeah, actually, for Angie's birthday a number of years ago, I bought her a, a, a phone case uh, with uh, Chihuly's, uh, um, um, some of his uh, work that he does on it. And so that really pretty colored case, that's actually Chihuly's work. So I'm impressed by your art knowledge yeah. on this question, well, the, Chris. It, well, as soon as I heard uh, Chihuly's name, I was like, oh, thank God, I do know this answer. <laughs> like, I know art. Yes. Uh, we also said glass or blown glass. Um, I'd have visited the museum in seattle which is incredible i've also i feel like i saw some chihuly somewhere else as well but i can't remember where that was maybe it was in uh, washington dc anyway blown glass 
So I've seen the Flor di Como. Uh, it's in the uh, lobby of the Bellagio Hotel. Oh, I've seen that too now yep. that I think about it. Yep, and it is made of glass. I really enjoyed Ch- um, Chiluli's hot sauce. It's very good. But up, um, not Chilulas. It's <laughs> Chihulas. Same thing to me, bro. Kohula. It was in a glass bottle. I don't think it's blown, though. Oh, well, you, haven't, <laughs> you haven't watched closely enough. <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> and your last category in the round is beasts that are legend. Wait for it. Dairy. Nice. Hope you're not lactose intolerant. <laughs> All right, we're talking about cows. <laughs> Dairy beasts. What mythical creature has the body of a lion, a tail of venomous spines, and the head of a human? We're locked in. So, head of a human, body of a lion, tail of venomous spines. <sighs> The only thing I'm coming up with is a griffin, but I think a griffin has wings, too. Yeah, I was thinking sphinx, because I'm know i I'm thinking of, like, the sphinx. I know the sphinx has, like, a cat-like body. Yep. I, don't know, yep. I don't know the tail, but I do know the face. Yeah, I'm willing to go with that. I, I, that's, I, I think, closer than where I'm at, so I'd, I'd say sphinx is a good one. Good okay. call. All right, we're locking in with sphinx. Okay. I think it's a manticore, so we guessed manticore. Uh, it is of Persian origin. It is similar to a sphinx, uh, but the sphinx does not have a tail of venomous spines. It is a manticore. Yeah. Wow! Good job. Hey, do y'all remember done. that? Do y'all remember game. that game that we played with Dan Lundberg? Yep. That was a manticore. That's yep. why I remembered it. Yep. Because it was fresh oh, in my mind. Okay. Time stories. Time stories. Yeah. Okay. That was a manticore. That's why I remembered it. I have that game. That game is good. It was awesome. You only play it once, though, and it's over. Yeah, then you buy other packs, but it takes a while to actually be able to get through it. <laughs> yeah, so. it does. Because Dan was like an expert in it, he ran the game for us, and we just played, and it went a lot faster than it went. It went really well. All right, the end of uh, second round, Jonathan and Ben have 60. Chris and Tim have 40. Yep, they're, uh, they're, they're playing a perfect game so far. Oh, that's right. All right, your first category in round three is hostess with the mostess. Yes, you are. What acerbic British television presenter hosted all 1,694 episodes of The Weakest Link? Oh, God, what's her name? Tim, if you have it, go ahead and lock it in, because that name's not coming into me. I've got it locked in. All right, you guys can talk about it. Oh, what's her doggone name, it's Ben? Anne Ann something. Ann Sullivan? She, Ann Rogers? Isn't she a Hall of Famer? Or is she, no. up, for, is she up this year? No. Not that one. Th- not that one? No, she's not. Okay. I thought she was a Hall of Famer. Definitely not. Ann Robinson? Ann Robinson. You think it's Robinson? I think it's Robinson. Okay. We're going to go Robinson. And I also locked in with Robinson. She was uh, parodied on the first season, the reboot of Doctor Who. She was the android. Is <laughs> Ann Robinson. Yes. <laughs> Your next category is geography. Geography. What he said. Dublin is the capital of the Republic of Ireland and has an urban population of about 1.1 million. 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 (laughs) 1.1 million people. It sits at the mouth of what river? It's the end of our perfect game, Ben. I don't know Irish rivers. Tim, if you have an idea and want to lock it in so they can talk it out, feel free. I uh, does that mean does that mean you don't have an idea? Not really. No. To be honest with you, one ge- geography is my weakest link. Yes, oh, I, every pun intended. Oh, yeah. <laughs> see what you did there? Yeah. Because uh, I've got two. Oh, okay. Well, we'll talk it out then. Let's just hold up and give him a chance to talk. Then we're locked in. Okay, Tim. What you think, right. sir? So the first, the one that came to me first is the Shannon. Okay. But the uh, the other river that came to mind was the Liffey. And my Irish grandfather would kill me uh, for not knowing this, but uh, geography is not my strong suit either. But do either of those strike you, the Shannon or the Liffey? The Shannon sounds awfully familiar, but I'm not sure what context it is. But what's what's your gut telling you? Shannon is what came to my mind first, so I think I'm feeling better with that. Yeah, I I think let's go with that just because... no other reason than that's that was what your initial thought process is and i trust my partner all right so we'll lock in with shannon okay so i was talking to jonathan i'm like i really think we need to lock in with old man river here (laughs) 
an <laughs> old, old man, man river. river. And he thought that was a terrible idea. Yeah, well, I wanted to make a real guess. So, I, uh, Shannon's a good answer. That's probably what I should have gone with. I might have made this up, um, which is possible. We went with Kilkenny. It's uh, Kilkenny definitely a river. place. I feel like, yeah, I feel like it might be a river. I think that's a sco- like a scotch also or something. It's an alcoholic beverage, I thought. Could be. Hmm. Anyway, Carmela. So, it is, uh, it is Irish. The Irish meaning is life. Is the river Liffey? Oh, darn it! <laughs> That's all right, man. That's all right. Don't worry <sighs> about it. Good job, at Rip. least coming in as part of the two. <laughs> See, oh, I feel like old man would be close enough because old man means you lived a long time. Wow! Just wow! Saying. I just want to put that out there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Ben's fired. <laughs> Fire me! Fire. I'm already fired. <laughs> Your last category before the midpoint is I'm hungry. Oh, me too. I was just starving. thinking about eating. <laughs> starving. <laughs> starving. <laughs> what fast food chain will deliver your food freaky fast? Oh, yeah. I'm locked in. Let me see it. Really? Really? We have to have it written down, Ben. That's all, folks. Yes. 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 <laughs> We're locked in. All right. I think you know what it is. Um, it's Jimmy John's. All right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Sounds good. Yeah, we're locked in with Jimmy John's. We also said Jimmy John's. It is definitely Jimmy John's. <laughs> Maybe that's what you guys should have for lunch. Fantastic. I don't no. like Jimmy John's at all. No. No? No, I really don't. Their food is very bland. Oh. I like, you know, their business model, though. No, no, it, I can't eat there anymore. It's it's pretty genius. You've been banned? No, no, they're brand. They're- yes, I have been banned from all brands. Even worse, she's been brand. <laughs> wow. No, I love their business model because it's like, okay, we're going to specialize in doing one thing and doing it very well. And they structure everything they do in that restaurant around being able to give you your food as fast as humanly possible. I yeah, agree with true. the 50% part of that. They're focusing on one thing. The do it well part, yeah. Well, they they get it to you fast. No, they, I'm talking about the delivery. Well. Yeah. They they do deliver on their business model. <laughs> nope, nobody delivers food faster than Jimmy. Jones. They make you a bland that, ham sandwich as fast as anybody. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That was the origin of McDonald's too. Fast and consistent. Repetible. Yeah. Repetible. Yeah, definitely yeah. repetible. <laughs> that, that's the scientific method. Repetible. By the way, I, if, I ever, if I could create a band name, I think Bland Ham Sandwich would need to be that band oh, no, name. No, my band name would be repetible for sure. <laughs> I, I didn't have my coffee this morning. It's though. barely oh, repetible. Jonathan, you know better than that, man. Uh, Apparently, I'm not that smart. Well, because you haven't had your coffee yet. Do so we need to get we, you some? Where are we at the half? At the end of the third round, it is 80 for Jonathan and Ben to 50 for Tim and Chris. 50. We should have 60. 60. We were 20 behind. Um, did you get the first question right? Yes. Yes, Ann Robinson. They didn't oh, get it. Oh, they did get it right. Sorry. They just they didn't get the Liffy. Just, just rub the whole Liffy thing in. Uh, <laughs> correction. Tim and Chris have 60. All right. Your midpoint category is selected, not elected. <laughs> I heard the word naughty in there. <laughs> I'm like, who is elected and why is she naughty? <laughs> You're trying, man. You're trying. There have been 45 presidents of the United States, but there have been five that served as president without ever winning an election. Name four of the five. Any bonus points for the fifth? Not this time. All right. All right. Just write them down, and then we'll uh, we'll chat yep. it out. I think that's the five. The ones I put a check by are the ones I'm most sure of not ever winning an election. She wants four answers, right? Right. Okay. Yep. Let's do it. We're locked in. All right, Mr. History Buff. I've got a couple of them written myself, so let's... Okay. Uh, John Tyler. 100%. Uh, Millard Fillmore. Oh, 100%. Andrew Johnson. 100%. Uh, uh, Chester Arthur. Uh, yeah, Chester Arthur. Okay, not a hundred percent, but I, I would, uh, I would trust you. What's the fifth one for you? Gerald Ford. Oh yeah, hundred percent on that one. So, can we do the four uh, and then hold up on Arthur? Yep. Even though so I'm sure you. Oh wait, Johnson. yeah, Chester, that's right. You're right. Arthur is the fifth one. That's right because of uh, um, Garfield. Garfield. Yep. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, but let's lock in. We can lock in all five, but we'll lock in. Uh, go ahead and do the say the four, um, whichever four is five. In. Yeah. Sure. Tyler, Fillmore, Johnson, and Ford. Okay. I read a quote once about Chester A. Arthur. 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 I, I always get those words messed up. It said when Garfield was killed, one of the one of the politicians said, Chet Arthur is president. God help us. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently he it's was the same thing I he said. He was one of the most corrupt men <laughs> He's going like a into frat boy. Well that and he was one of the most corrupt men going into the office, but when Garfield died, he actually had a turn of conscience mm. and actually fulfilled the rest of Garfield's agendas that he wanted to have um, really? and then decided not to run yeah. because he didn't he never wanted to be president in the first place. He was like a yeah. quartermaster mm. in the military. And he was the um, uh, collected all the tariffs in New York at the yeah. New York port, which was the biggest uh, yeah. receiver of, of taxes. And then, yeah, he did civil service reform. So he actually made got rid of the spoils system, where all you, if you were elected president, you got to give everybody a job. People yep. actually had to you know know what the hell they were doing. We so we said Ford, Arthur, Fillmore, and Andrew Johnson, and we had Tyler and left him off. So the first one to do it. Uh, took over after William Harry, Henry Harrison died was John Tyler. Uh, he did not secure the nomination for the next time, I believe. Uh, Millard Fillmore took over for Zachary Taylor after he died, did not get the nomination for the next election. Andrew Johnson took over for Abraham Lincoln, uh, was impeached, so did not re- run again. Chester A. Arthur took over for James Garfield, did not seek re-election, and Gerald Ford took over for Richard Nixon and was beaten up by Jimmy Carter in the next election. He was beaten up by Jimmy Carter? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I said beaten out, but yes. So. <laughs> and, he, and Carter was a huge underdog going into that fight as well. Just want to point that out. He had reach, yeah. but he was really low weight. Yeah, he was. <laughs> he was. It was all the peanuts. <laughs> At the end of the midpoint, Ben and Jonathan have 100 Chris and Tim have an 80. All right, that is the end of the first half. And before we go on to the second half of today's game, I want to let you know that today's episode is sponsored by HelloFresh. You all are very familiar with HelloFresh at this point. If you haven't tried it yet, you are missing out. They make cooking delicious meals at home a reality, even if you're like me and you don't know what the heck you're doing in the kitchen. See, they give you everything you need. They give you a step-by-step recipe. They send the ingredients to you. They're already pre-measured. They have everything that you need to come up with a fantastic dinner, get it on the table within about 30 minutes. You know what? It's a really flexible plan. You can change your delivery days. You can change your food preferences. If you need to skip a week, you can skip a week, but there's something for everyone with HelloFresh. They have family plans. They have calorie smart plans. They have vegetarian plans. They even have fun menu series like the Hall of Fame and Kraft Burgers. If you want to start cooking and start eating out less, HelloFresh is the way to do it. Uh, I did just that the other day. I made uh, some pork carnitas tacos on Tuesday. So it was Taco Tuesday at the Oaks residence. And uh, it was ground pork. There was uh, some pickled onions in it. And so the the uh, tacos were great, but the pickled onions, which I'd never pickled anything fresh before. That was really interesting. They really set it apart. They gave a little tang and a little flavor that contrasted the rest of the carnitas tacos. And they were delicious. Sebastian was fully on board. He had three and wanted more. That tells you how much he liked it. Uh, you can try... HelloFresh right now for $80 off your first month of HelloFresh. Go to HelloFresh.com slash TWA80 and enter the code TWA80. That's right. You can get $80 off your first month of HelloFresh by going to HelloFresh.com slash TWA80 and entering the code TWA80. All right. Let's get on to the second half of today's game. All right, your first category in round four is, oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Mickey Mouse is probably one of the most recognized IPs in history. However, Walt Disney did all did not always call him Mickey. What was the mouse's original name? I'm 100% Ben. 
Oh. We're locked in. All right, Tim. It was Mortimer Mouse. You're right on. Yep. So we locked in with Mortimer. There's a Disney Junior cartoon called Mickey Mouse's Clubhouse. Mm-hmm. And there is a superhero episode of this uh, show. And the villain is usually Pete. But there was a a overlord bad guy. And it was played by Mortimer Mouse. Oh, and he funny. was a tall, ah. skinny mouse. And he... He talked like a gangster from the 20s. Ha, cha, cha. <laughs> <laughs> nice. We said Mortimer. He's Bugsy Siegel. <laughs> yes, Every time he said something, it's like, ha, cha, cha, cha. <laughs> I'm glad they changed it to Mickey because I don't think Mortimer is a very good name for a mouse. Morty Mouse. <laughs> Morty, Morty Mouse. A lot harder to spell in that theme song. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> M-O-R-I-R-I-R. Your next category is Easy A. I love that movie. In the book, The Scarlet Letter, what was the name of Hester Prynne's daughter conceived from her affair? Oh, oh snap. This question brought to us by Waco. Thank you, Waco. Yeah, I was Waco. currently reading The Scarlet Letter and asked me this question earlier this week. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Going Just back to the classics, huh? Yeah. I don't have wow. any idea, dude. All right, we're locked in. I didn't want to interrupt them while they were thinking. I love this movie. Easy A was such a fantastic movie. Emma Stone just is, a, is wonderful. Yeah. Do you have any ideas? Because this is one of those things where as soon as I hear it, I'm going to kick myself. The name that popped into my head immediately, and the only name was Pearl. Yes. Okay, I'm not yeah. going to kick myself because I think you're... Uh, yeah, I think that's the right answer. Okay, should we lock in with that? Yep, please. All right, lock in with Pearl. If you're right, you're going to make up ground because we guessed chastity. <laughs> that's ironic. <laughs> that's why we guessed it. That's why we chose it. Uh, the little girl's name was Pearl. Oh. Yes, Tim, good job. All right. A little, little make up there. Yeah. I, I don't think irony existed. <laughs> I don't know if that was uh, Nathaniel Hawthorne's thing. Yeah. No, Tim, as soon as you said that, I was like, oh, thank God. Okay, he did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Your last question of the round is brought to us by Andrew Hasheter. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks, Thanks Andrew. Andrew. Obligatory sports question, wrestling edition. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. And we Dude. lose. <laughs> well, you have Chris. Chris is pretty good at wrestling. That's true. All right. There are three teams that have won the WCW World Tag Team Championship at least seven times. Name two. Two point bonus for all three. Woo. Okay. Just saying, Chris, this is all on you. Oh, no pressure or nothing. This is no. actually I would feel the same way. This I don't is know actually, anything about wrestling. No, this is actually a very difficult question. Is it? Yeah, it really is. I was so. like, I don't know. That seems cool. <laughs> <laughs> you said seven times? Yeah, they've won at least seven times. Okay. I don't know how big the pool is for tag team, so uh, it's it's massive. Oh, okay. But no, it's but still a great. Qu- I love the question. Just mm-hmm. it, it's using these. It's, it's using the old yeah. brain box. <laughs> it hurts. All right, we're locked, we're locked in. in. Okay. Ooh, man, this is a fun question, but man, it is <laughs> actually tough because seven—that's a lot. That is a lot of times. First one I thought of was Harlem Heat, and that was uh, Booker T and his uh, brother Stevie Ray. Anyway. uh, I have no idea what's going on. (laughs) (laughs) It's their theme music. Oh, okay. (laughs) Uh, The next one is uh, the Four Horsemen. And the reason why I thought about the Four Horsemen was for the simple fact that, like, there's so many different. Well, that and also there's so many different additions or uh there's so many different reiterations of them that they very well could have won seven times and not had any problems with it the next thing i was thinking of was the midnight express so i'm not gonna i don't really want to think about it all that much just because i'm not i'm not 100 percent confident on all of them and it's going to be one of those things where i know i'm going to probably kick myself a little bit on it but um, we're going to lock in. The two answers we're going to lock in with are harlem heat and the four horsemen and then our bonus is going to be the midnight express all right. Uh, we also locked in with the Harlem Heat and the Four Horsemen. We guessed the Fabulous Freebirds as our bonus. Uh, the other one we were considering was the Rock and Roll Express. Yeah, I was thinking Rock and Roll Express also. I, but... Those older teams, I just don't yeah. know well enough. Yep. So the three teams that have won seven or more championships is the Minnesota Wrecking Crew, mm. the uh, Harlem Heat, 
and the Steiner Brothers. Oh, oh the Steiner oh, Brothers! Oh, of course. How did we not think of the Steiner I Brothers? Oh, that is. Oh, how is it thought, that the Four Horsemen didn't? Uh, maybe they just never really competed for the tag team. I'm with you, Tony. Arn Anderson and Tully. Tully. I just read the questions. No, no, Arn Anderson and Tully Blanchard were the uh, uh, were the brain busters. But they were a tag team together in the Four Horsemen too. I didn't too. think they were. I thought yeah. well, Arn and uh, Arn and Ole Anderson were. Oh, what but, a sell, man. I, I thought the Steiner Brothers were one it of was the, the group Steiner who Brothers. A fast food restaurant from the Warm It Up. <laughs> and I'm from Michigan, damn it! <laughs> <laughs> the Minnesota Wrecking Crew was the other one we didn't name. Who is the. I mean, oh my God, hold on, I got well, I could tell you who the Minnesota Wrecking Crew is. Oh, thank is. you. Please. I would like that. Because. Uh, uh, Dan Lundberg, <laughs> Rob Warman, <laughs> Andrew Thomas. Because actually, the way Andrew originally sent me the question was he wanted. Uh, the bonus to be naming the people in there. And I thought Ooh. that was, I wanted to do it a different way. Oh, bless you, bud. So. That was, yeah, that would have been tough. Remember, don't roll back in that chair, Ben. So the Minnesota Wrecking Crew it's already was, his expired date, Chris. Uh, Gene and Lars Anderson. Hmm. Nope. That's that's Arn's dad or brothers, I think. Oh, is it? Okay. I think so. Hmm. So the Steiner brothers were Rick and Scott Steiner. Right. Of course. Yep. And, and then, then Harlem Heat is Booker T and Stevie Ray. Yep. So nobody got any points for that. Nope. No. Nope. You go you got both you got Harlem Heat, but you didn't get the Steiner brothers or the Minnesota Wrecking Crew. I think the Wrecking Crew is related to Arn Anderson. Uh, it it would make sense with the la- that last name, but that was a great question. So thank you, Andrew. Where are we at at the end of round four? <laughs> At the end of round four, uh, we have 110 points for Ben and Jonathan to 100 points for Chris and Tim. Sweet. All right. We caught up 10. 10. Your first category in round five is name that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's that guy. Good old what's his name. Oh, what's his name? All right. What actor starred in both the HBO show Six Feet Under and Showtime's Dexter? Hey, I don't know. I don't even know the main character I'm either. I'm pretty shows. sure I know this one. M- me too. Oh, okay, cool. Well, if you want to lock it in and let them talk, you can. I trust you. Uh, I don't trust me. Oh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> but if you trust Chris, and Chris trusts himself. <laughs> well, that's true too. All right. How are you feeling, Chris? I feel really good about it, but we'll let them answer. Okay. Because I'm pretty sure Jonathan's going to get it wrong, so it's okay. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Reluctant. All right. So I wrote down uh, Michael C. Hall. And I wrote down Michael C. Hall. All right. We're locked in with Michael C. Hall. Let's lock in with Hall. Okay. What about Oates? I'm just thinking. Or Michael. (laughs) Don't steal my answer. Sorry, man. No, I know it's Michael C. Hall. I'm, I'm okay. okay with the I, I get that's exactly what I wrote, so mm-hmm. I'm good with it. Okay, we're locked in with that. Is Peter Krause a real person? He is. Was he in Six Feet Under? He was in he Six was. Feet Under. We I don't guessed, think he was in Dexter, though. Oh, obviously not. Uh, we guessed <laughs> Peter Krause, and I'm proud that I actually came up with his last yeah, well name. well done. He was in Sports yeah. Night, and he also yeah. is in the new show, uh, 911, that's out right now. I am impressed that you did name a person from Six Feet Under, so congratulations. Yes. Considering I've never seen any of the shows, <laughs> yes, me too. <laughs> And um, it's name that guy. <laughs> yeah, name that guy. Um, but the person I am looking for actually started as Dexter, and it was Michael C. Hall. Yes. Caught it's up. Work, Chris. It took most of the episode, but we caught up. <laughs> Your next category is you're going to run out of fingers and toes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like about? where this is going. What are you talking about, man? <laughs> the Greek prefix giga, which means giant, denotes what number? I think this is a Ben Sweet Spot question. Okay, we're locked in. At first blush, Tim, my um, yeah. my answer was a thousand. So I think I think a thousand is kila, like a kilobyte. Okay, that would make sense. And so. then you a megabyte of a million, a gigabyte of a billion, and then I think it's a tera. Yeah, after terabyte. that. Yeah, I mean that's what I th- that's kind of my memory of like history of of memory and computers going up. Okay. That, you know, it was like you got to a megabyte, then you got to a gigabyte, then a terabyte. So I'm guessing billion. So th- so you're thinking thousand, million, billion, billion. and then I guess a trillion. Yeah. All right. All right. So what are you going with? A little. Uh, for giga, we're going for a billion. Okay. Billion. Mm, ben, I think they're right. 
I think we're I wrong. remember researching this before and something <sighs> stuck in my mind that the way that it follows in the actual prefixes doesn't exactly doesn't. follow how we calculate it in terms of memory. No, well that's because of the twenty four the the, no, 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 the not, eight I'm, bit I'm, thing. No, not, it's not just that. I think that the denominations don't exactly follow. Which is why I was comfortable with us locking in with a million because okay. I, I didn't think that it would be billion. Because in terms of memory, I should have been more clear in my own mind. You go from a thousand, which is a kilobyte, to a thousand kilobytes is a megabyte, which would be a million, and then a thousand meg a thousand megabytes would be a gigabyte, which would be a billion. So you guys locked in with what million? With okay. Name. All right. So giga it will denote ten to the ninth. Which is a billion. Damn it! <laughs> that's that's on me. I should have taken more time. It's, it's on both of us. I agree to it. All right. Your last category in the round is height is just a number. Damn right. <laughs> Stand- <laughs> Sadly, it's getting to be a lower number as time goes on. <laughs> <laughs> Standing at five feet, three inches, and spending a good chunk of his career playing for the Charlotte Hornets, who is the shortest player to ever play in the NBA? Locked in. I am taller than this person. Uh, It's Muggsy Bogues. Oh, thank you. Yeah. All right. All right. We're locked in with Muggsy Bogues. We said Bogues. Because <laughs> I get most of my basketball knowledge from Space Jam. Nice. I was about to say. <laughs> the that's right a, place to that's get That's a it. good place to uh, get basketball knowledge from. I'm looking for Tyrone Muggsy Bogues. Oh, I didn't know his first name was his Tyrone. His first name's Tyrone. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. I have so technically, re- Muggsy is incorrect. <laughs> Nickname. Whatever. I have, I have Tyrone Muggsy <laughs> Bogues written down. <laughs> It's a joke. So Jeez. I don't I don't know if he still has this record, but I think at the time he retired, he had the highest assist to turnover ratio in the history of the NBA when he retired. Well, that I don't know. I just know who the shortest player in the NBA is because I'm like, whoo, I'm taller than a basketball player. What's <laughs> ironic, so what's ironic is you would think because he's short, it was a huge disadvantage, but actually a lot of opposing coaches said that because he was, had such a low center of gravity, mm-hmm. he was always a threat to steal because he could get underneath yep. the other players. And it's hard, it's it's hard for people to reach in on him because he's dribbling so like a <laughs> foot lower than they're like, used right. to. Yeah, and, and he could go between their legs. <laughs> <laughs> on a go-kart. <laughs> All right, where are we at after round five? Uh, we're not liking where we're at after round five because Chris and Tim have taken a lead. It is 130 to 120. All right, well, let's get into round six. Your first category is, could you find it on a map? No, sometimes. Yerevan is one of the oldest continuously inhabited cities in the world, having a stable population since about 782 BC. It is currently the capital of what European country? Tim, I'm hoping you have some idea. <laughs> you keep open there, my friend. <laughs> yes, I agree with you there. I'm just not. A, I'm just telling you, I'm not 100. percent That's just the best answer I have. All right, we're locked in. He's like, of the two you gave me, only one of them's in Europe. Okay, well, let's go with that one. <laughs> Tim and I would like to actually look at a map in order to figure out. I was going to say, support. that's right. Could you, you give still me those might two? Have a I would literally, I would literally give you ten seconds with a map if you wanted it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, man, am I American? I know, right? Um, I'm feeling very American right now, which means I'm feeling stupid. Feeling American, American, yeah, American. So we can throw out everything in the United Kingdom. We can, um, obviously, we can throw out Italy and I was going to say, I hate to say kind of like Western Europe. I feel like this is Eastern Europe. Okay. Because I feel like those I am fairly familiar with. Okay. Uh, and then, well, no, that's what I was actually- thinking, too. Like, So, Luxembourg, it's going to be like Albania, or it's going to be one of those like just countries that I don't really think about all that often, I'm sure, if at all. To be fair, they probably don't think about you either. That's true. And I, you know what? I completely appreciate that. I don't know if we need to really spend too much time thinking on this no. just because we don't know it clearly. Clearly. The, I don't think it's the Balkans. I don't think it's Albania, but I feel like, hey, what the heck? You want to just try that and then move on? Sure. And right. lose those points. Yeah. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Sadly, from Cheers, I know that 
Albania borders on the Adriatic because in one of the shows they sang the song Albania, Albania, you border on the Adriatic. Um, <laughs> so uh, that's the all. I mean, so I, it's in the right scope of the world. It's close to Turkey age. Okay. So uh, yeah, let's go. Yeah. I mean, are you good with that? We're locking in with uh, our wrong answer of Albania. And I apologize for the singing. No, you, that was great. No, you really should. That was, <laughs> that was, that was, that was, that was as bad as anything we've ever done. Oh, whatever, dude. <laughs> awesome. You've sang way worse. Thank you. So, um, pick on my partner. So, I've been working on geography lately, and I've gotten it to the point now where when I take quizzes, I can name all of the countries, and I'm very proud of that. I can do that in about 10 minutes. And I've moved on to doing countries and then world capitals. And right now I'm about 68% of the capitals. Nice. And it's challenging. There's, there's some hard ones out there. But I was really dismayed. I'm not 100% on this one in particular. But I was really dismayed when we came up with the same country. We locked in with Albania. Well, I will let you know that it is an A country. It is Armenia. Oh, my oh. God. That's part. It's considered part of Europe. Yes, it that's is, the two we were choosing between. It is. We oh. were choosing between Armenia and, and Albania. I was like, well, oh, wow. It's on the other side oh, of Turkey, so I would think that would be part of Asia, not Europe, which is why we went. It Albania. is east of Turkey, but I mean, I, that is interesting because the it's eastern. Part of, the, it's part of the former USSR. It's it's the, it's part the, of. Is it part of Europe? The eastern part of Turkey is Asia, and this is east of that. I think Armenians consider themselves European, not Asian. I'm going to double check it because yeah. that was literally the reason we didn't go with it. I didn't know Turkey was considered a part of Europe. <sighs> the They're... left hand side is, but the yeah, right hand side split. isn't. Yeah, by the Bosphorus. The country in Asia, according to Google. I had it as uh, European. Let me, is there anything? Ah, here we go. Armenia and Cyprus politically are considered European. But geog- geographically, they are Asian. So there we go. As the host, it is your choice as to whether or not you want to do a replacement for that question or if you want to live with it. No, my question was accurate. Okay. So for the record, for you folks who are listening, the difference in European or Asian for this country is political versus geographical. So if you get something for yourself in the future, be sure to note the difference. Your next category is origin stories. Malcolm X was an inf- influential activist in the civil rights movement. During his time in prison, he joined the Nation of Islam and changed his name to Malcolm X. What was his name before that? Oh my gosh. His name was not Albania. <laughs> oh, that part. All right, we're locked in. We're locked think, in. I don't think his name oh. was Jackass, though. That's just, nah, it's that's Jonathan's not- name. <laughs> Jackass Albania, my new roller derby name. <laughs> I was going to say, that could be your wrestling name, dude. Because <laughs> I don't know if I want to see you on roller skates. As mean as you are to me, and I'm the one who gets criticized in the reviews. That was not mean. Life is not fair sometimes. <laughs> that was not mean. You are just not, you are naturally clumsy like I am, my friend. Is that not true? Digging them holes, digging them holes. <laughs> anyway, so do you have any ideas? Because I do not. Uh, I'm trying to... Pull this out of some recess. It'd drive me crazy. So, yeah, it's generic last name time. Yeah. Carter? Jamal Warner? Sure. All right, we're locking in with Carter. Actually, Malcolm Jamal Warner was named after Malcolm X. See? I'm on it. I'm pretty sure his last name was Little. Cleavon? <laughs> <laughs> Do what he say? Yeah, he hailed from, uh, I believe it was Omaha, Nebraska. It was Malcolm Little. All right. Nice job, oh. you two. Really good job. Very good, yeah. We needed that point. It's bad. We actually more needed you to not get it right. Actually. You're right. All right, your last category before the final is brought to us by David Kendall. Thank you, David. Thanks, David. Flags. And your category is Canada McMaple Bacon. Oh, oh boy. snap. What mm, company bacon. founded May 2nd, 1670? and is Canada's oldest company, started as a fur trading company and provided governance to much 
of what is now Western Canada before eventually evolving into the retail store it is today. Its parent company also owns Saks Fifth Avenue and Lord & Taylor, which coincidentally is the U.S.'s oldest department store. Ben, I have no idea. There's so much information in the question, and I'm still not close to an answer. So, Tim, do you think it's Tim Hortons? (laughs) That's the only only Canadian store I can name. (laughs) We're locked in. Okay, well, thanks to making uh, Carmela read this question like 800 times, <laughs> we have a few clues. The clues that I wrote down were 1670, Canadian's uh, oldest company. It was a former fur trading company, uh, then uh, providing governance throughout Canada, which is an interesting phrase, although I'm just not sure what that's all about. Uh, and then Saks Fifth Avenue, Lord & Taylor, and then a retail store instead of like a department store. But do you, did you get anything? After crossing out as just every name that came to mind, the only thing that I came up with was the Hudson Bay Company. Oh. But I don't know. I mean, it's I, I think it's of the era, the 1600s. I don't know if it's like a parent company or if it exists any longer. I think they're part of fur trading. They were very big. But, I mean, that's frankly the only name that I felt any confidence mm-hmm. in. But I have no idea if it still exists or if there are retail outlets in Canada. So I think we should go ahead and go with your answer. Even if it's wrong, I think it has at least a little logic around around it. And so I'm good with it. All right. With very little logic, I'll point out the Hudson Bay Company. <laughs> so right. We'll lock right. it. We spent a lot of time going through bad logic, good logic, no logic. <laughs> and uh, we ended up with Montgomery Award. Oh, okay. Mm. All right. Well, uh, Montgomery Ward no longer exists. Yeah, we were scared of that. That was Ben's logic. We wondered if they might still exist in Canada. Gotcha. That makes. Mm. I, I understand why you might do that. Uh, the Canadians uh, simply refer to it as the Bay, apparently, but it is Hudson Bay. Oh, oh my, my gosh, God. Tim! <laughs> Tim, that was amazing! <laughs> wow! Uh, <laughs> that was a big deal right there. Sure was. Holy crap, <laughs> Tim! <laughs> wow. Well done. I didn't know I had it in me. At the end of the sixth round, Tim and Chris have taken a 10-point lead. It is 140 to 130. All right. So what is the gauntlet category, Carmela? Is life uh, finds a way. <laughs> <laughs> is it the uh, too, or is it just... That, that's what I wrote. Life uh, finds a way. <laughs> All right. Our wager is locked in. Uh, We're locked in with our wager. All right. So your first question in the gauntlet. The Mesozoic era is also known as the Age of Reptiles and is divided into three major periods. What is the name of the oldest of these periods? We're locked in. We're locked in. All right. Your next question. In the book and the film Jurassic Park, Dr. Ian Malcolm is a mathematician that specializes in what? We're locked in. Okay. I'll be honest with you. Can I be real for a minute here? I hated the first Jurassic Park. Hated it. Movie or book? Uh, The movie. I never read the book, actually. The book's pretty good. Did you like any of the later ones? I like the Jurassic World, but more I think I liked it because Chris Pratt was in it. Oh, the, that, like the I people, haven't seen those. You see what I'm saying? The people that were in it were uh, enjoyable for me. I the, really thought the first movie was excellent. The, I re- uh, the, the original, I thought it the, was fabulous. The, the child in me is very angry at you. Yeah. I get it. I, I'm, I'm not disagreeing. <laughs> I haven't seen the new one yet. I actually I'm, should watch those. I saw Jurassic World. I haven't seen the second one of those. Fallen but. Kingdoms is okay. It's not, yeah. it's not anything to write home about, but it was, again, the people are likable. No, I literally saw the first movie in the movie theater and not since. So, Understood. And we should just say, played beautifully by Jeff Goldblum, because there's nothing that dude can't do. I think you're stalling. You're 100% right, you my friend. There is no thinking. Let me confirm. We are stalling. We're locked in. All right. And your last question in life uh, finds a way. <laughs> First discovered near the town of Moab, what kind of dinosaur is the largest known member of the Dromosauridae, much taller and heavier than their Velociraptor cousins? We're locked in. 
Yeah, we're uh, locked in with our final answer. All right. So the Mesozoic era, known as the Age of Reptiles, was divided into three major periods. What is the oldest of the three? Yeah, after a lot of bantering and realizing we don't know crap about this, <laughs> we wrote uh, Paleozoic. Okay. So before you gave any other questions and you did the category name, I wrote down to Ben. I said, this is going to be questions about Jurassic Park, Jeff Goldblum, maybe DNA, that kind of stuff. Oh, nice. Well done, by the way. And wow. um, when you asked for the three, I wrote down Precambrian, Jurassic, and Triassic. Uh, I don't know for sure that Precambrian fits in there, but I think it does, and I think it's first. But Ben's like, look, you said Jurassic Park was going to be what this question's about. We should go Jurassic. I was like, you know what? That's good logic. So we went Jurassic. All right. In the book and film Jurassic Park, Ian Malcolm is a mathematician that specializes in what? We said chaos theory. Okay. Uh, That would have been a great answer. Too bad we did not do that. We had no idea. As I said, I, don't, I did not really enjoy the first movie one bit. Uh, we wrote genetics. Okay. And first discovered near the town of Moab, what was the largest known member of the Dromosauridae? I don't know exactly what a Dromosauridae is. We ended up saying T-Rex. I feel like there's been a bigger one of those discovered. I, can't, I don't know the name of it yet, but we couldn't guess at it bigger than that, so we said T-Rex. We also came up with T-Rex for not, not, not a particularly great reason. but <laughs> All right. So, Dr. Ian Malcolm did specialize in chaos theory. The Paleozoic is the era right before the Mesozoic, yeah. means old life. The three periods are the Triassic, the Jurassic, and the Cretaceous. Oh. Cretaceous is the newest. Jurassic is in the middle. Ah! Triassic is the shortest and the oldest. Uh. Triassic Park is frightening in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> and if you know where the town of Moab is, it's in Utah. Oh, Utah, it's a Utah Raptor's Sores. the new biggest one. It's a Utah Sores. So a uh, it's a, Utah Raptor. a Velociraptor is about the size of a large chicken, and a Utah Raptor is larger oh. than a human. I've never heard of a Utah Raptor. So, I've heard of Utah Saurus, but not a Utah so Raptor. So I gave Moab and the uh, Velociraptor hoping that you would get to Utah Raptor. Oh, I honestly thought uh, that that uh, Moab was a country in the Middle East. That's I, I, I like thought the exact same thing. Moab, Utah. Thing. I didn't know. Night, nice clues. We just did not find nope. them. <laughs> did not find a way. <laughs> so uh, That's true. That's true. Uh, ben, you and I... Wagered 30. We did. We're going to finish with 100 points. Uh, Chris and Tim, we don't know what you wagered, but if it's any more than 40, you will have lost. What did you wager? Tim, talk to him. We wagered five. God. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. All right. With 135 to 130, our winners are Chris and Tim. 130? Sorry? <laughs> 135 to 100. Our winners are Chris and Tim. Woo-hoo! Good job, Tim. Yeah. Hudson Bay was well, that was the that was the whole ball that was yeah. the ball game right there. You're, you're not right. wrong. Just now, Chris, when you're doing your victory dance, I just realized that if if you were, if we were somewhere and you suddenly broke out in a seizure, I'd have absolutely no idea. <laughs> just, you'd be like, why is he so happy? Yeah, I was just like, I would have no idea. Uh, well, fair enough. Anyway. Tim, we won, man. You Bro. redeemed yourself. Well done. I did. I'm now one for one. So, oh, one, or one for two, I no, should no, say. As I, you're one and one. <laughs> yeah, one and one. You're, That's you're a- batting 500, man. <laughs> Which is pretty darn good. In the last three games, I'm 3-0. and oh. <sighs> Wow. Up. All right. Good. Actually, that's really good. Tim, we'd like to give everybody a chance to do shout outs or promote any causes they're interested in. The floor is yours, my friend. Oh, well, thanks. I, you know, I mentioned it on up front. I would just uh, say it again. If uh, support your local food banks, there's lots of people in need out there and a uh, little bit goes a long way. So, you know, if you can pitch in, I know people out there need the help. So fantastic. Well said, sir. Very cool. All right. Well, that is going to wrap us up. So for Tim, Carmela, Chris and Ben, my name is Jonathan, and this has been another episode of Trivial Warfare, where it's not just trivia, it's war. Bye, guys. Take care, everybody. Bye. See you. Thanks for listening to Trivial Warfare. 
be sure to check out the revamped TrivialWarfare.com as your one-stop shop to submit questions, join the community, and get access to over 150 archived episodes. Warm It Up was written and performed by Matthew Stevens. This episode was edited and produced by me, Joel Sharpton. For help with your podcast, visit propodcastingservices.com. Uh, Chris, I think we're going to be covering a lot of the same territory, so this will be interesting. All right, then. <laughs> I mean, you can have Ben if you want. No, I'm... You could be nice, traded, nice, you Jonathan. Could, you could be traded Ben and a player to be named Chris later is if a you better want to. player. Even if you're similar, he's still a better player. <laughs> that's, I was, yeah, I was, that's where I was going. It's like, eh, yeah, okay. I mean, I'll, I'll I'll be happy. To ben. That's what's going on. No. <laughs> it's factual. I was giving him a choice. It's just no, a Chris, we haven't played with he Chris. He was Chris being great. rude to Ben. I was offering him up as an equal. <laughs> I, I just interpreted that way. You're, you're right, Jonathan. <laughs> mm-hmm. Do you want a shirt that you already have or a different shirt that's too small? Which one? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good analogy. All right, here we go. You okay? Oh, he really did break his chair. Damn. Well, you tried to roll it out, and I don't think that's a rolling chair. (laughs) Roll out. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, Stone Cold Steve Austin. You can (laughs) see my back. (laughs) Man, that sucks. I'm sorry, man. (laughs) Well, you tried to roll it out. That's not a rolling chair. (laughs) He's like, no (laughs) shit. <laughs> You're 100 percent right, though. He didn't yeah. lift up. He just uh, pushed yeah. back, and that chair's like. Oh. <laughs> he killed the chair. Yeah.